Hello and welcome back to the series on pandas in Python, designed for those without a lot of coding experience. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to clean up some of your data frame columns. And I think that's going to help you kind of get the data frame into the uh, kind of the structure that you need. Remember, in Excel, one of the things that you can do is you can quite easily delete a column, move a column, or just kind of uh, work with one column in your in your data set. It's a little bit more challenging to do that sometimes in an environment like Python and Pandas. So one of the things that you oftentimes will find yourself needing to do, just for maybe just for organization's sake, you're going to need to drop a few columns. You're going to need to kind of get rid of columns that have missing values so that you can maybe have a better machine learning algorithm. You're going to have to do this for a few different reasons. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of the basic ways to do that, from dropping a column to removing rows that have an NAN or a none value, um, how to remove rows that have an NAN in a specific column. So maybe like one column has got some data missing. You don't want to use that column at all. You can kind of remove that. We're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about how to kind of convert a, a data frame column. So one of the things that you'll notice right out of the bat with our Titanic data set is our age column, which is represented as a floating number. Now there's a reason for that. We have infants that are referenced and they have a, um, a floating or a decimal point number to represent their age. We also have some people who are like 17 and a half, not, not just 17 and not just 18. So there's a reason for having these floating numbers in this data set. But maybe I, as a researcher, am just kind of interested in converting all of my floating numbers to just integers. So we're going to talk about how to do that as well. So let's kind of jump right in. The first thing that we're going to be doing in this video, as always, is going to be importing pandas as PD. That way we got our, our pandas imported correctly and everything's fantastic. The next thing we need to do is we need to create our, our data frames. So we're going to say df is going to be equal to pd. Uh, read CSV. We're going to read that same CSV file, which is data backslash Titanic dot CSV. And now let's go ahead and just make sure that it loaded well. And it did. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you all so you can see a bit better. And let's go ahead now and start kind of working with the first challenge of this video. Let's go ahead and try and drop a couple different um, a couple different columns. Maybe they're they're not exactly useful for our data set and I, or our analysis. So let's go ahead and drop some. We're going to drop this parch right here, and we're also going to drop this ticket number. I'm not interested in either one of those in this scenario, and I don't even want to look at them. They're just clouding my workspace. So let's go ahead and drop them right now. Pandas comes with a handy function called drop. So you can say df.drop, and we can take in a couple different arguments here. We're going to pass in columns, which is going to take, in this case, a list. It's going to be a list of the columns that we want to drop. So we can say p, arch, and ticket. And now when I execute that, we notice that our data frame no longer has p, arch, or ticket columns in the actual data sets. We have effectively dropped or removed those columns. Now, another common problem, you're going to have this issue rise up time and again, is you're going to have some uh, some rows that have an NAN value or a none value in them. This is problematic for everything from machine learning to just basic. If you're, if you're working with strings, it can be a problem if you're working with strings. But you'll find that the NAN value, while useful, can present some issues with your data. So we're going to run a function right now to just remove all rows that have an NAN value in any column. So all the way over. If it's got an NAN in any of these columns, let's pay attention right here to number four. If it's got an NAN in any column, it's going to be dropped. In this case, it's the cabin number. So we, what we'd expect to see from this function is index zero and index four dropped because they have an NAN value and likewise with 886. So how do we do that? Well, again, pandas has a built-in function. You can say df dot drop an A and execute that cell. And notice now that we started index one because the row of index zero has been dropped. And the reason for that is because it had an NAN value or a none value in one of its rows. At other times, you're going to want to do something a little bit more complex. Maybe uh, you're going to want to remove rows that have an NAN value in just a specific column. So you're not looking for rows to be dropped where um, everything is uh, in any row could have an NAN, but maybe just an NAN in one specific row. Let's say I, I don't want to see people, I don't care about, for whatever reason, I don't care about the cabin, but I don't want to work with individuals or passengers who have a NAN in the age column. Maybe it's going to throw off a machine learning algorithm I'm working on. 
Let's go ahead and try and do that now. Let's go ahead and make a new data frame. We're going to call this DF2. That's going to be equal to pd.readcsv. We're going to call in that Titanic Ooh, data backslash Titanic dot CSV. Let's go ahead and just make sure we got our, our data the way we want to see it. And we have P arch still in there. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to remove individuals like 888 who have got an NAN in just the age column. Let's try to remove those. So how can we do that? Well, one of the things that we can do is we can say DF2 is going to be equal to DF2, DF2. And then we're going to say specifically age dot not in A. So what does this command say? Well, it says I want to go into the data, this data frame two, DF2, and I want to look at every single column that has age. And I only want that data frame to consist of call uh, of of these rows where age does not have a not in a <laughs> excuse like the triple negative here. But that's essentially what it's saying. So when we execute the cell, we've got a new data frame essentially created. And let's scroll down to our 888 index. And notice that our 888 index is now gone. And that's because row number in this case, 888 had an NAN in the column there. And so we just simply removed that column. Now let's go ahead and look at uh, row number zero. Remember row number zero had uh, NAN in one of its columns. Let's, let me scroll over a little bit of a problem working out here. It had a uh, an NAN in the cabin column, and yet it has remained. And the reason why it's remained is because our function here, our code here, tells it to only remove the rows that have an, an NAN in the age column. So if it didn't, it got ignored. That's a very important thing to do for a lot of different problems that you might encounter. Another problem that you might encounter is let's say you're working with the data and uh, you've got floating numbers in a place where floating numbers might not make perfect sense. This is true for the age column. Again, like I said, there's a reason why it's here and it's important for certain problems. But for our argument right now, let's try and just create a uh, kind of convert this all from a floating number into a uh, an integer. So let's do df2.age. We're going to convert this now. We're going to say df2.age. So we're going to go in and change the df2 age column with this command right here as type. What this is going to do is it's going to take the original data frame, look at the age column and convert it into an integer. And now when we actually do DF2, we find that we actually have all of our ages now converted into integers, no longer floating numbers. Now there's an error here and I recommend kind of reading it on your own, but for the most part, we have actually achieved what we wanted to actually achieve. So that's how you kind of go through and clean up your data frame with some basic cleaning methods on at the row and at the column level. In later, more advanced videos, we're going to talk about how to clean your data on a object by object level. So how to clean data if you're working with strings, if you're working with integers, if you're working with maybe something, some other kind of object. Uh, but for right now, that's going to be it. We're going to kind of leave it here. And then in the next video, we're going to start talking about some more advanced subjects that you can do in pandas. And I think this is particularly relevant to any kind of digital humanities based project, which oftentimes works with string data or textual data. I'm going to talk about how to do some advanced searching on strings. And then we're going to talk about some advanced filtering and querying and some advanced grouping methods all in pandas. So that's going to be where we go over the next few videos. But hopefully by now you've got a good sense of how to kind of drop rows and columns that might not fit your needs. If you've gotten a lot out of this video, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon. I use all the money from there to keep this channel alive and continue making content for free for everyone.